are starting our service. And we will begin our service with the ringing of the bell and the lighting of the Christ candle. light the candle as a reminder of the Christ light that shines in each and every one of us. You'll find the opening statement on the inside of your bulletin, so let's repeat that together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotent. Now still just a moment. Allow it to anchor into your heart. And now let's repeat it once more. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotent. And so it is. Our songs this morning are led by Ron and accompanied by Jeff. Good morning. Hi. Would you please stand? We'll sing Surely the Presence and find it right inside your front cover.
to Unity of Kanawha Valley on this sad and joyous day as we say goodbye to Sky as he starts his retirement. And we hold our annual meeting to elect new board members. But it's also a day of joy as we move forward. So for announcements today, I'm just going to mention two things, and that is that the Unravel Group is Tuesday at 515 downstairs, and on Friday, November 1st, we have our Friday Fun Night, which is bingo! <laughs> so you have all the information you need for both of those um, in your bulletin, and I'm going to let you read all the other announcements and turn it over to Sky. We're keeping it moving today, aren't we? Yeah, we have a lot to do today. Greetings! Woo! Good morning! Welcome, namaste, bienvenido, shalom, assalamu alaikum, namaste, aloha, bonjourno, and kalametta! The light in me greets the light in you. My name is Sky Kirshner. Thank you for letting me be for one final day. <laughs> Your pastor, storyteller, guide, and friend. As of the end of this week, I will be transitioning simply to your fellow Unity Church member. Still be a storyteller, still be a friend, and fellow member of this amazing church with the biggest footprint in the world. I want to welcome you to Union of Kanawha Valley Live and to so many of our friends who are here and to, uh, who, to you on Zoom. Thank you for being with us from wherever you are. We do have a few folks who have never been here before. Azita Mazagi, would you introduce your mother to us, please? <laughs> Wait, okay, wait a minute, we need the microphone. Chris is, this, this was a surprise for Chris. We have a Baha'i community here in Charleston, and we have been uh, associated with Sky for many years. Uh, he's been gracious enough to consider us a friend. The, this is my mom, Bahia, and uh, many of the other Baha'i friends have passed on their life. So we're so grateful to have you here. And I see a beautiful woman from Costa Rica there. I didn't think she was going to be here. Would you be interested in introducing yourself? Uh, Chris, I'm referring to this beautiful woman. There are a lot of beautiful women here in the room. Um, oh, yeah, now I'm going to hear about this, aren't I? Yeah. You could do it in Spanish. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Maria, in the sky's wife. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone else here for the first time? All right, we will continue. I uh, want to continue to lift up our board and our prayer chaplains, our nominating committee, and our new board, which will be elected later, uh, or some new members as we continue to plan for the future of our church. So let's join together in the prayer. Are we gonna do the prayer for the church later or shall we do it now? Uh, let's do it now. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so in the, in the front of your bulletin, there's a uh, beautiful prayer by James Dillard Friedman. It describes what we're about here. So would you join me in speaking this prayer? in the front cover. This is God's home, house. May we who come here not only find out about God, but find God. May there be beauty in this place, but especially may it be a place where men and women become aware of the beauty in themselves. May this be a place of worship. May this be a place of instruction. May this be a place of singing. 
May this be a place of prayer. But for those who worship and take instruction and sing and pray, may this always be a place of inner stillness where we may listen and hear when God speaks. May whoever ministers here minister in love. May whoever teaches here teach truth. May whoever serves here serve pleasantly. May everyone come into this house in expectation and go with thanksgiving. And may anyone who comes needing help go feeling blessed. May this be such a house that Jesus Christ or any stranger, even one of the least, would feel in it that he or she was with friends. Amen. Well, as you can see, uh, Unity of Kanawha Valley is a special place. We come together to celebrate love in its many forms. Many of us are committed to practicing the spirituality of Jesus, the Jewish mystic, who taught with his words and his actions a universal love for everyone and everything. Unity promotes the idea that the light of God, the spirit of love, is within you, and that by practicing going within, you can discover this love, and when you find this love, or this love finds you, you can become a fuller expression of love out into the world. You don't have to do or say anything special to earn this love or be worthy of it. It's already inside you. It's been there all along. You don't have to be born again to find this love. You were born fine the first time. This love is the source of all life and love and everything there is in the universe. If you came here today to learn some metaphysical ideas and practices about love, you're probably in the right place. We have a cafeteria philosophy. Take what you like, take whatever helps you to be more loving, and leave the rest. If something today seems strange or unusual to you, and why wouldn't it be? Thank you for that. <laughs> we invite you to try and put it to the test and see what your own experience is. So today we will be exploring the idea of trust in the future as we continue to grow together. Affirmative prayer is a central part of what we're about today, so let's do that right now. Would you soften your gaze? Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Let a smile come to your face and notice how that feels when you smile. And would you say to yourself, I feel the presence of life and love within me. I feel the presence of life and love within me. I breathe in love and I release any thoughts of separation. I breathe in love and it is my intention to release any thoughts of disconnection. And if you would imagine you are standing in front of someone you love, you might be separated from that person by time or geography or by the veil of life and death. Imagine you're standing in front of this person. Look this loving person in the eye. This person is one of your cheerleaders. They are one of your fans. See them looking back at you and smiling with love in their eyes. And would you say to that person, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for being with me today. All right, and if you would, please give yourself a nice big yawn and a nice big stretch. And I'd like you to ask you to stand up if you are able. We practice balance here at Unity, so we're gonna do that right now. 
Let's start with our right foot. So let's stand on one foot, please. This is probably the best thing you can do to prevent falling. Standing, oh, Barbie Dahlman. Standing on one foot, is that your good foot? <laughs> That's your good foot, okay. And now it's okay, let's go to the other foot. Fantastic, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. All right, fantastic. And if you would find someone sitting alone, find someone you have not met yet, turn to them and say, thank you for being with me today. Thank you. Lee Humor. Let's hear it for Ron and Jeff. For Pam Hippler, our hardworking, multitasking magician of administrative magic. Let's hear it for Pam Hippler. Who was our? For Janet, our jubilant general of joie de vivre. Let's hear it for Janet. For our hardworking board, hardest working board, uh, especially this year, Stephen Keith counting down the minutes. <laughs> I want to thank Stephen. We're going to be doing that more later on, as well as Phil Herndon, Barbie Dahlman, Mary Beth Beller. Uh, David Getman and Laura Wellstead and Kate Flack. Thank you for being our hardworking board. Let's hear it for our board. And I want to thank Ernie Kessel, our uh, hostess with the mostest in our Zoom zone, and our uh, zeroed in Zohans of the Zoom zone, Rich. Chris, Danny, and Amy, thank you guys for uh, keeping us going. Our daily word reader today is Barbie Dahman, thank you. And our junior bell ringer today, who rang our bell this morning? Colton. Colton, let's hear it for Colton who rang our bell. It's always good to have somebody in your life who knows how to ring your bell. 
I want to encourage you to spend some time in silence every day. And I want to remind you, oh, I haven't said this in a while. Where's Laura Wells? Did I haven't said this in a while, but I'm going to say it now. Will you say it with me? God is your source. The pen is in your hand, and a new day is dawning for us all. And uh, let's spend a moment in uh, appreciating the present moment and the beauty of this feeling of community that we have right here, right now. So you might notice the sounds in the room as we kind of shuffle to get more comfortable. You might notice the feeling of warmth or coolness in the room. You might notice your breathing, this circulation of breath, the taking in of the breath, the letting go. All of life is represented in this experience of breathing. It becomes a metaphor for everything, the taking in, the exchange, the release and letting go, and then the rest. With each breath, we experience the cycle of life, the circle of life, the circle of love, which involves taking in, giving and receiving, and letting go. Jesus, the Jewish mystic, taught that the kingdom of heaven is in your midst. It is at hand. It is here and now. And it is within. And so we go within to wonder with curiosity about this teaching. In what way is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, within each and every one of us? We wonder what does this kingdom feel like? How can we touch it and let it touch us? Surely we are bigger on the inside than we are on the outside. This kingdom has several qualities, the quality of abundance and sufficiency, the sense that we are enough and we have enough. Everything we need is right here in this present moment. This kingdom has the quality of healing and cure, healing from pain, feeling, healing from adversity, healing from physical ailments, and also acceptance. Acceptance that what is, is, and the healing that comes from acceptance. This kingdom has the quality of relationship and love not only connection, but also disruption. 
And with disruption comes the possibility of repair. And with repair comes the possibility of forgiveness. And this kingdom has the quality of guidance, the sense that there is a wisdom and that that wisdom, that guidance is all around us. That the still small voice still speaks both within us and through our daily experience. And it's from this place that we reach out to anyone, anywhere, in any need or trouble. Those who are living in fear for their lives, those who are running for their lives, those who are trapped and hiding, those who are hungry, those who are cold, those who are wet. Those who are overheated. Those who are thirsty. Those who are separated from those that they love, those who are grieving. Those who are anxious about the future or carrying guilt about the past. We see you. We see you in your pain. And we reach out to you. We reach out to you in our mind's eye. We see you and we reach out to you from a place of love. We reach out to you from a place where we see that God's love is spread out equally through this world and through this universe. And that the experience of that love is possible in any situation, for any purpose, for any person, with no exceptions, the awareness and the experience of this love is possible at every moment, regardless of the circumstance, with no exceptions. And for this, we are grateful. The daily word for Sunday, October 27th is creative. The creative energy of spirit expresses through me. Stunning visual arts, inspirational music, a brilliant performance. These are all lovely examples of creativity, but they are by no means the only ones. Creativity is the very nature of life. From the most soaring, soul-inspiring instance to the mundane moments that fill daily life, creative acts abound. Creative activities are prayers in action, a continuation of divine activity in its infinite manifestations. Living is a creative act. It's the way I am in the world, the way I love and the way I relate to all others. Understanding it in this way, I see how I am using my thoughts, feelings, and imagination 
to create my experiences. I bring my divine gifts to life through my creativity. And from Genesis 1:26, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. The uh, board asked me to do this at the celebration later, but I have a mountain stage today. So they consented to let me do this song um, in the service. Um, like the rest of you, I'm, I'm, I'm cut all over the map with my emotions, but um, uh, but uh, I wrote this, rewrote one of Sky's, uh, a song, the words to one of Sky's favorite artists, Van Morrison, on his 10th anniversary. Oh, I said like yesterday, right? And, and um, so I've re rewritten the words um, for today. Um, and um, I think there'll be copies of the lyrics later, Stephen, right? For anybody who would like them. Anyway, this is for you, Sky. Huh? Oh yeah, and we'll do it in the key. Jeff reminded me that we rehearsed it at. That's always good. That's why he makes the big bucks, you know. That's right. Okay. Okay. He was born an only son lived in Thailand when he was young and there he began his journey into the mystic just four years old and he can still recall how the Buddhist temples filled him with awe and his soul and his spirit soared into the mystic And he wrestled the fears inside his head. And he searched for truth wherever his heart led, wherever his heart led. He grew up tall and explored the world, fell in love with a dark-haired girl, and hand in hand they walked into the mystic. First came David and then Maria Celeste. He wondered how a man could be so blessed as he continued his quest into the mystic. the fears inside his head and he searched for the truth wherever his heart led his heart Catholic, he studied with Jews, ordained a Methodist, but still he moved deeper and deeper and deeper into the mystic. He prayed for unity until one day he found what he sought when he came our way. And so each Sunday he led us into the mystic. wrestled his fears 
inside his head and search for truth wherever his heart led wherever his heart led with humor and kindness he taught God's own and the attitude toward us is love and he led us deeper into the mystic and so we celebrate today that 20 years ago the sky came our way and together we have journeyed into the mystic it's 20 years ago he came our way and for that we are so grateful and we pray that he takes our love with him today as he travels deeper into the mystic <laughs> Stephen Keith is crying now. He's making me cry. Wow. That was pretty cool, wasn't that? Would the kids come up and help me with something? And Chris, I'm going to turn this mic off so, I don't get, so we don't get feedback. All right, let's, let's sit down right here. All right, so we're going to say our name into the uh, the microphone. My name's Sky. My name's Leah. Yes, it is. My name's Henry. My name's Tegan. My name's Layla. And do you want to say your name? What's your name? Colton. Colton, fantastic. Hey, wasn't that a great song? Wow, that was awesome. I felt some tears coming to my eyes. Have you guys ever cried about something? Have you ever felt tears come into your eyes? Sometimes they're happy. Oh, sorry. I felt these tears come into my eyes. Sometimes you can have happy tears. Sometimes you can have sad tears. Sometimes you can have, I don't know why I'm crying right now, tears. <laughs> right? Has everybody had those kinds of tears too? Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you for being here today and uh, for crying with me because it's much better to cry if you have people to cry with it's it's not as much fun to cry alone can i get a unity amen on that <laughs> yeah yeah have you ever had somebody to cry with right Layla, would you be able to say who have you cried with my mom probably probably that's a good guess i bet that has everybody here cried with their mom at one time or another? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we've said enough about that. So let me, because uh, it's just going to go. Yeah. All right. So let's everybody get a, get a card. Take a card. This is a gift from me to you. And I'm coming over there, Colton. Which one do you want? This one. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Good job. Okay, and let's, uh, Henry, would you read your card? Can you read that out loud? I am the best me that I can be. Fantastic. You read that beautifully. I am the best me that I can be. Let's take that idea into our hearts for a second. Would everybody just say that silently to yourself? I am the best me that I can be. And let's listen to the uh, sound of the bell. Let's take a, close our eyes and take a nice big breath in. Very good, and let that out again. And let's take another breath in, and here we go.
still here. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks for these kids and for the child in each and every one of us. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Let's hear it for our kids. Let's hear it for our parents. Let's hear it for our grandparents. Did you get the one you want? You got two there. That's good. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for being here. You can go back with your parents. You can keep the cards. Those are yours. And thank you for being here. Well, I, I don't have, actually, I did hear a funny joke. <laughs> Why not? It's my last day. Oh. No, on? Okay. Yeah, why not? Uh, I thought it was funny, at least. Um, uh, please, give me your grace. Um, it was National No Bra Day last week. It was the first time they'd ever done it, but it was a flop. <laughs> ah, that's good, isn't it? All right, never mind. Put, put your hand on your heart. That'll be memorable. Put your... <laughs> Brings to mind the song that it's I'm brewing in my mind for that I was gonna write for Sky is called My Favorite Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> to to be to, to yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. <laughs> Put your hand on your heart, please, and repeat after me. This is my heart. Through it I am connected to my neighbor, to my source, and to myself. I'm learning to trust it in all things. And I am grateful. Well, uh, I'm just going to say a word or two because the main, uh, the main event today is that we're bringing three new members into uh, the Church at Unity. And um, my prayer, my thought is that you will have as good an experience here as I've had. Um, Rabbi Yurecki, uh in, um, he's also in a retirement glide, and uh, he uh, wrote not too long ago that uh, the congregation there at B'nai Jacob uh, has given him the greatest gift it could ever give, and that is the gift of letting him be himself. And I feel that thoroughly here. And this is, uh, it's unique among congregations that they let the pastor be themselves, and uh, I've appreciated that. I could not have done this for as long as I did it uh, if you hadn't let me be myself. And as importantly, you helped me give myself the gift of being myself. That's a two-way uh, gift. Um, I've uh, spoken in a lot of churches, a lot of places. This is the only place where I feel free to say whatever I'm actually thinking, and uh, you've gotten uh, you've gotten the best and worst of me. And uh, thank you so much for uh, all of your love and support. Uh, and I trust that our new members and and uh, our friends uh, w will also feel this sense that you are affirmed to be yourself. You can be. Uh, when I lived in New Jersey, I used to drive by this little country church. And I loved that it had this sign out in front of it that said, come as you are, God will have you no other way. And I think that captures the sense that we have here. Last week, I wore a, uh, a sort of orange-colored shirt, and I was talking about how important unity is to me. And someone in the audience, uh, someone here, came up to me afterwards and said, wow, I can't believe that you have tattooed the Unity logo right there on your chest. No, it wasn't. 
<laughs> it wasn't a tattoo of the Unity logo. So you have to, it's, a, it's a Unity shirt. And, uh, but I do have a hundred of them and every color and I will continue to wear them with pride. Um, I thought I would just end with a, a, a daily word of reading. This is a lovely one about time. Uh, I think thinking about time does send us into the mystery. And um, just as a little weird um, wink from uh, God, um, I was setting up the, uh, the video that we're going to watch in a few minutes, and I couldn't reach back there without taking my watch off. So I took my watch off, and I got the thing all set up, and it's working, or it was working. And since then, I haven't been able to find my watch. <laughs> it's a white wrist watch with a white band on it. Now, the funny thing about this watch is that I got it after I was lost skiing in Dolly Sods during the snowstorm because I was lost and uh, with a buddy of mine. And um, we were, it's kind of our thing. We just kind of go in there. And uh, we found some ski tracks, and we thought, oh, well, this will probably, let's follow these, because we're just going off into, we're not following any tracks, and we're just way back in there. So we came across some ski tracks, and we thought, well, somebody else is here, so let's follow them. So 45 minutes later, we realized we were following our own tracks, and we had gone <laughs> in a big circle. and. Um, Usually at Dolly Sods, if the sun's out, you know which way to go because the, the wet, when the sun starts setting in the west and it was getting dark, but it was so hazy. It was one of those days you couldn't really tell where the sun was. So uh, luckily my phone, I didn't know but the compass on my phone because there, was, there wasn't any cell service, but this phone was still working. So uh, we've, we've, okay, west is that way. So we just started heading west and eventually we got our way back home after dark and I, uh, put the story up on Facebook, and about 100 people said, oh, you need to get a GPS watch. That way you won't be lost. So guess what's lost? <laughs> a GPS watch. So uh, I just want to end with this beautiful uh, daily word. I replace any feeling of tension, hurry, or frustration with the realization that God is in charge of my time and that I have time to share and time to spare. God is in charge of my time. I remind myself of this when I have numerous tasks to accomplish by a certain time. I stop for a moment, quiet my thoughts, and then give thanks that I have time to do all things. I replace any feelings of tension, hurry, or frustration with the realization that God is in charge of my time and that I have time to share and time to spare. I give thanks for God's gift of time. I give thanks, too, that God gives us the ability to accomplish all that needs to be done with ease and success. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. I utilize my time to the best of advantage so that everything I do contributes to the outworking of that which is for my highest good and for the highest good of all concerned. Amen. All right. So I want to introduce you to two of my friends. These are two unity uh, Zoom folks. We have three people joining uh, the church today. Nancy, Nancy Hill, but uh, Nancy Hill will be one of them. I'm going to ask you to come up last because we have a couple other things to do. But I want to introduce you to two folks that you may not have met yet. Uh, Lindsay Wilson and Irene Voris. And let me get them up. And where are we? Oh, great. Technical difficulty. Please stand by. Oh, there it is. Okay. And we're going to hear from Lindsay Wilson first. Lindsay lives in London, Ontario, Canada. 
You may recognize her. Uh, she was known as Linda Mainland years ago. She was a member of our church here, and she's a regular at our uh, uh, Thursday uh, book study, as well as the Sunday service, and she's here with us live, but this is a recording we did uh, the other day, just oh, so she could introduce herself. Each Sunday just to come up. All right, and here we go. There we go. No. Oh, there she goes. Well, she was right there a second ago. Oh. I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in again. Is that like that? Yeah. Well, that's where I took it off. It's right here somewhere. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, now it wants to do airplay. Great. <laughs> we could do that if we need. There it is. All right, we'll try one more time. Please. <laughs> Yay. There we go. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wilson, at least nowadays. Some of you might remember me as Linda Mainland back in the 90s when I went to Unity there in Charleston. Uh, and I did some story, told some a couple of sermons and did stories and, and Tim and I played some Indian music on with Ron. That was a long time ago. That was like 35 years ago, right? So uh, now I live in London, Canada, uh, Ontario with my husband, George, and um, I've been a part of the book study for quite a bit. And I was just inspired to go ahead and join because I feel a part of this church and have felt a part of this church for a long time. I used to live in Athens, West Virginia, so it was, uh, at that time, it was over 100 miles to Blaine. I think it was Blaine Street, wasn't it? Blaine Road. That was our first church. And, uh, one way. So it was over 200 miles each Sunday just to come up to worship with you all. And I just really enjoy being there. And uh, so I've been active in unity for a long time. I went to seminary and was ordained at a, um, a unity seminary that uh, didn't get to be a Unity Seminary anymore because Unity decided to make all the seminaries just get Unity Village. And I was right at that cutoff point. And uh, so I was ordained in Arizona at the Pauline May uh, Seminary. And used to live in Unity Village. Uh, have met uh, James Miller Freeman a number of times. My dad and my grandfather knew him and stopped at Unity Village on regular uh, times. My grandfather started a religious publishing company in Cincinnati, and he went around the United States to different places. And so he was at Unity Village regularly, and my dad was when he took over my grandfather's job. And my father carried that uh, prayer protection in his wallet from about 1942 when he entered the, the army until he died. When he died, it was still in his billfold. He had carried it all that time. Um, I can't think of anything else you might like to know about me. I sure enjoy you all. Love you. And that's probably it. All right, let's hear it for Linda, Linda Wilson. Thank you. And next we have. Uh, next we have Irene Voris. Uh, and we're going to hear from her. When, after. Come on. Yes. 
My name's Irene Boris, and I was born in Vienna, Austria, and moved to Budapest, Hungary, um, until the age of, age of 10 and a half when I came to America. Uh, my upbringing was Jewish, but we were a non-practicing family, and I somehow was drawn uh, as, as a young child to be looking. I was seeking from the very beginning for something. I didn't know what, but it was something. And um, because of my curiosity about religion and not getting any of that at home, I asked the ladies that were cleaning for us about their religion, which was, of course, Christian. So I was introduced to Christianity um, through all my questions and their um, answers to my questions. Uh, Irene was taught to be to say she was Christian as a way to hide from the Nazis. So it wasn't just that her family wasn't observant, but this was a necessary thing for survival. So she eventually wound up here in the United States, uh, continued to be a searcher and a seeker, uh, had been connected with a small Unity Church live, at one point, uh, and then found us, I'm not quite sure how, oh, through Lindsay, uh, she found us, and um, so uh, she's a, a very active member of the Sunday group, the after party, and the book club. So let's hear it for Irene Voris. And uh, Irene, thank you so much. I will send out the rest of her, uh, the link to the rest of it. An email so you can hear the rest of her amazing story. Nancy Bird, please come up and uh, share something about yourself. And uh, Nancy Hill, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. It's a joy to talk to you all today, uh, to a congregation that has always been so welcoming and made me always feel a part. And um, I was raised Presbyterian and uh, got v uh, very spiritual when I started going to Episcopal church camp with my friends from high school. It was really a, a very nice awakening for me spiritually. 
And then um, I um, ended up marrying a Catholic gentleman, and we had a most fabulous relationship because we were part of Jody DeBias's congregation at Blessed Sacrament. And I just, um, I, I loved being there, but I did not feel that I should become Catholic. And I sat in Jody's office and cried, and he said, Nancy, you don't have to feel guilty. He said, uh, <laughs> in fact, he had a lady in the congregation had done needlepoint and put it on his wall, screw guilt. I thought, yeah, <laughs> this is my man. <laughs> And uh, he said, there's lots of people in this congregation that are not Catholic that take communion. And that made me feel so much better. And we had a wonderful wedding there. And Jody married us with a dear friend of his and mine who was the pastor at Thomas Memorial where I was working at the time. And we were very happy there. And then we had Father uh, Leon after Jody ended up leaving because he fell in love with a woman, which I never understood what was wrong with that. <laughs> and um, so um, it was a very unique journey, uh, but when we were happy, and then one Sunday, um, the deacon reads a letter that the bishop had decreed be read to all the congregations at how you should vote in the national election. And we just did not feel that was appropriate at all. And um, so we drifted away. And I very luckily uh, in, gone to Marshall and had met Jeannie Chandler. She ended up, I, I moved back to Charleston and she's my next door neighbor. So that was incredible and started a, 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 a very special friendship that continues to this day, and Lisa and John too. And um, I uh, then uh, started coming to Unity. And that was when you were on the West Side location and the burning bowl ceremony was just fabulous. I just felt so enriched by it. And then to write myself a letter that I would receive on my birthday about what was going on inside of me at the time, I thought, this is very, very special. And I have always enjoyed coming here, and you always make me feel so welcome. And I've known Ron Soule since uh, I was at Marshall, and the Putnam County Pickers would play in the coffee house. And there's nothing better than getting up on a Sunday morning and hearing saying morning is broken. Um, there's a spirit here that transcends. And I just want to thank you for letting me become a part of it. Thank you so much. And as we honor Sky today, I just want to reiterate, thank you for 20 years of the love trickling down. And thank you, and may it continue on. is that we uh, can you hear me our tradition is that we sing I behold the Christ in you so if you'd like to stand you can beam her you can beam each other so look around and uh, we're going to send this love to you Nancy so uh, just take this in as best you can maestro I behold the Christ in you
of Kanawha Valley is a tithing church. That means that 10% of everything we take in goes out to bless others. And this month, our tithe is going uh, to honor John Beck. It is going to the ALS Foundation. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon. And if the ushers would come forward, please. Let's say our offering blessing together. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I see. I give in love, I trust God, and I am grateful. I, uh... I think this song uh, um, expresses the way that we feel about our, our church and our community. I, I, I thank everybody for being here. I especially thank my Baha'i friends for being here. Um, uh, I've been a, a part of, of their community off and on over the years, and I don't think anybody expresses the what, what this song is uh, in the, um, in, about the inclusiveness that this song expresses better than they do. So um, this, is called, this is a beautiful... Peter Mayer song, which if I get the lyrics up here, I'll probably be do a better job singing it. Um, Nancy's going to help me, and there's a part for you, too. You want to count this up? Jesus spoke entreating them to live together in a great circle of love. And his followers asked him then who should be included. And Jesus said, let everybody in, everybody in, everybody in to the circle, circle. Everybody, 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 everybody in to the circle, circle. Oligarchs and try, tyrants try to keep some in and everyone else outside. Till revolution sweeps across the land and the people all stand and the common folk cry. Let everybody in, everybody in, everybody in to the circle, circle. Everybody in, everybody, 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 everybody in to the circle, circle. Sometimes a circle is a class or a creed. Sometimes a circle is made of only men. Until Susan, until Susan B. Anthony says, what about me? Let me in. So everybody in, everybody in, everybody in to the circle, sir. Still the circle is a privileged thing, excluding people for the color of their skin. Until the voice of Martin Luther King says, let freedom ring, let them in. Oh, everybody in, everybody in, let everybody in to the circle, circle, everybody in. Straight, rich and poor, whole and broken, open up that door. The more we are, the greater we become. After all, we are all one. Bring in the people, but don't stop there. 
Bring in the fish of the sea and the birds in the air. Bring in the rivers wide and the mountains tall. We go together or not at all. Let everybody in, everybody in. Everybody into the circle, circle. Everybody in. Everybody in. Everybody into the circle, so let everybody in. Everybody in. Everybody into the circle. It's a great view from up here. <laughs> so let us bless this offering today. I feel the presence of God as I express my gratitude. In this moment, I am grateful for being able to attend this church since its beginnings in 1987. I'm grateful for the support that this congregation has supplied, for the 20 years of service given by our minister, Scott Kirshner, and for each and every person who has attended these services throughout the years. As I take time to focus on being thankful, my heart, my mind, and my soul fills with gratitude. I affirm again and again, I am grateful. And so it is. Amen. So if you'll just keep your seats there just for a minute. We are going to save our closing song until after the annual meeting. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephen and we will conduct the